People, why is Starlink no longer available to order in Jamaica? Let's dive in to try and understand why. Welcome back to 24.Windsor. If you tried to order Starlink in Jamaica recently, you would have gotten a message that Starlink is at capacity in your area. In fact, at capacity for Jamaica. The whole island sold out with no idea when Starlink will start shipping again. What does this mean? If you are already using Starlink or if you want to order one to activate to use at your house or at work. To understand what this means, let's start by taking a look at how Starlink works. Starlink is a satellite based internet service provider owned by SpaceX. Yes, Starlink is like a subsidiary to the company called SpaceX. Starlink is designed to deliver high speed internet service, especially in remote areas like at our off grid cabin in the bush of Portland. So, this service is really good for areas where you either don't have internet service or internet service is very poor. What makes this so ideal is that it operates through a constellation of thousands of small satellites in low earth orbit or LEO. That means there is no need to install utility poles or to run cable to your home. Now, if LEO sounds familiar, it may be because of a competing service offered by Amazon. It's not ready for Jamaica's yet, but if you would like to get updates from Amazon about LEO, you can go to the Amazon LEO website and add your name on your waiting list. What does low Earth orbit mean? This means these Starlink satellites are circling the Earth at about 550 kilometers in space. That's about 342 miles up in the air. And send and receive signals to the Starlink terminals on the ground or the one that is mounted on your roof. Now, these satellites are very different from the older geostationary satellite systems that are much higher in here, about 35,000 kilometers or about 22,000 miles above the Earth. And the signals from these geostationary satellites take longer to reach Earth, so you could see some delays in signals getting from one place to another. Now, because the Starlink satellites are so close to the Earth, the signal gets to the Earth much quicker, making this setup a great option for streaming, online gaming, video calls on WhatsApp, FaceTime or Zoom, and remote work like working from home. When we're off grid, staying connected is very important to us. And Starlink is one of the best options that is available today. It's a relatively new technology, so we'll see what happens with Amazon Leo becomes generally available. People, remember, like this video so that YouTube will send it to more people, all right? And also subscribe to the channel, all right? Thanks. So this is how the Starlink system works. Once you have your terminal, the setup is just a couple of steps. First, you mount the Starlink outside where it has clear view of the sky. The newer Starlink dishes must be adjusted manually using the Starlink mobile app, while the older terminals do this automatically. This adjustment ensures that it can track the satellites as they are passing overhead in the sky. Next, you plug the cable from the Starlink into the Wi-Fi router that is provided and plug the router into power and it powers on. And that's it. Once it boots up, you should have access to the internet. The Starlink terminal, which is a phased array antenna, communicates with overhead satellites using radio frequencies, sending and receiving information. We're not going to get too technical, all right? But it's called a phase array antenna because of the way it communicates with satellites moving across the sky while it remains stationary on the ground. If you would like more details on how phase array work, just let me know in the comments. The Starlink satellites are equipped with advanced navigation sensors to maintain precise positioning. They send data directly to the ground stations, also called gateways, that connect to the regular internet so that you can access the websites and other services that you love to use, like YouTube. Oh, yes, a reminder to like this video and subscribe. Remember I said that these satellites are 550 kilometers above the Earth? At that distance, they are going around the Earth once every 90 minutes, traveling at about 27,300 kilometers per hour, or 17,000 miles per hour. This is about seven times faster than a speeding bullet. Now let's imagine a race with Usain Bolt. He ran the 100 meter in 9.58 seconds. Well, in 9.58 seconds, the satellites would have traveled almost 73,000 meters. 
and that's about 45 miles. Although the satellites are moving at this speed, the Starlink dish seamlessly connects to a satellite and as the satellite moves out of view, it switches to the next available satellite. And this happens every couple minutes. The switch is done so fast, it appears there was no break in the connection to the satellites. As at late 2025, the Starlink constellation is estimated to include over 8,600 active satellites with over 8 million customer activations with plans to continue growing at record pace. Although there are so many satellites, there are some restrictions to the Starlink network that limits the amount of dishes or terminals can connect in a specific location. The area where service is provided, for example, the island of Jamaica, is divided into geographic cells. These cells are hexagonal, they have six sides, and they are about 15 to 25 kilometers across. And each of these cells are served by a set of satellites. Each cell has a finite amount of bandwidth available which is determined by things like the number of satellites visible for the cell and also overall speed available to the cell, which is estimated at about one to two gigabits per second per cell. This may change over time as more satellites become available. Okay, so a Starlink cell is a hexagonal geographic area used to manage bandwidth capacity and user distribution. The exact size vary depending on the location and the network design. But Starlink's standard cell size is approximately 15 to 25 kilometers across or 9 to 15 miles. Based on this, a standard geographic cell is generally about 200 to 250 square kilometers with some variation depending on the specific region and how many networks are deployed. Okay, now let's take a look at Starlink's map. We could assume that they have about 100% coverage of Jamaica and Jamaica land area is approximately 11,000 square kilometers. Based on the size of the cells, Jamaica could theoretically be covered by about 40 to 50 geographic cells. To prevent oversubscription, where too many users compete for limited bandwidth in these cells and cause degraded speeds or outages, Starlink caps the number of active subscribers per cell between 200 to 300, depending on density and demand. Starlink could therefore support approximately 12,000 terminals across all cells in Jamaica. In high demand or urban areas, cells may be smaller to distribute load, but once a cell reaches capacity, new signups or address changes are blocked, placing users on a wait list until more capacity is available. To increase capacity, Starlink needs to increase the number of satellites or ground stations. This ensures consistent performance for existing customers with advertised download speeds of 50 to 200 megabits per second or higher. But it can lead to availability issues in popular regions. So in Jamaica, some users have already started complaining about the lackluster performance of their Starlink since Hurricane Melissa. So what could be causing this availability problem in Jamaica? It would appear that Starlink has reached its capacity for Jamaica. This would mean we possibly have 10 to 12,000 active users. However, there is also a thought that this could possibly be due to a restriction to protect the local service providers, which I doubt strongly. People, based on the current situation, persons who are still interested in, in getting Starlink can reserve their spot on the wait list on the Starlink website and receive a notification as soon as service becomes available again in their region, and in fact in Jamaica. There has been some speculations that resellers have been ordering and stocking Starlink terminals in Jamaica. If this is the case, these stocks may also be affected by the restriction for activation. Let me know if you have heard of any new activations in the last few days for terminals already in Jamaica. Residential customers who have portability option turned on may not be able to relocate service from their existing address to a new address. So if you had physically moved your Starlink from your main residential address to another address for temporary use, you may have a problem relocating it and reactivating it at your main residential address. Following the passage of the Category 5 Hurricane Melissa, Starlink orders exploded in Jamaica. This was led by, by government orders to support the relief and recovery effort, local internet service providers ordering for their key customers, small entrepreneurs ordering to resell, and of course new customers ordering for use at their home and work. No one expected this level of growth in such a short space of time and the demand does not appear to have peaked as yet. With this break-in activation, will the local providers be able to address this gap or will Amazon Leo step in? We will see.
So to answer the question on what this means for existing and new Starlink customers, these are my thoughts. One, existing customers may start to notice a degrading performance for their internet access. And that is because of the, the network being congested or the geographic cell that they're in being congested. Two, for existing customers, not being able to, you know, physically take up your Starlink from your ad one address and moving it and reactivating it at another address. For new customers, they may not be able to activate new Starlink um, terminals, especially if they were received from overseas or bought from a local reseller, they may find that they are unable to activate those Starlink devices. And of course, no new orders at this point. Any new orders would be placed on a wait list. So those are my thoughts they could be incorrect so if you have heard about anybody that has activated a starlink in the last few weeks um, you can just drop something in the comments or if you believe that there is any other impact to new or existing customers or any impact that you're seeing you can also drop that in the comment thanks for watching a reminder to like this video and also subscribe to the channel until next time bye